So topic 46 is about the properties of logarithms. In previous topics, we sort of explored what a logarithm is. It's nothing more than a fancy way of writing an exponent. It's, it's a way of highlighting the exponents. It's a way to do math with exponents. And since, you know, exponents have properties, it sort of makes sense that logarithms have properties too. So let's write them down. Let's talk about them. Um, and they sort of follow suit with the properties of exponents. Um, there are three that we're going to talk about, and not surprisingly, they have the same name. Like exponents, logarithms have a product property, and this is what it says. If you have a log base anything, and the argument of the log is a multiplication problem, you can split apart the individual logs with an addition. So in non-math speak, that says the log of a product is the sum of the logs of the factors. Well, if there's a product property, not surprisingly, there's a quotient property as well. And it basically says the exact opposite. If you have a log base B of anything, um, of a division problem, you can split apart the log with a subtraction. So the short uh, idea is that if you have a fraction inside of a log and you want to split it apart, whatever factors in the numerator will be a positive log, whatever factors in the denominator will be a negative log. And we have also, like exponents, a power property. That says if your argument is an exponential expression, that is a different base. Now, as we talked about in topic 44, I believe, um, if the bases were the same, they would just cancel out. So in this case, if you have an exponential expression inside of log with a different base, you can take this exponent and sort of move them out in front of the log. So this becomes the exponent n times log base b of the regular x. Please note the original arguments inside of the logs here. They are simply multiplication, division, and uh, exponentiation. Those are the only things inside of the log that we can have in order for these properties to be true. Common mistakes students make, and I do not want you to make this. Common mistakes. Kids do this log base b of x plus y oh i can distribute the log log base b of x plus log base b of y this is bad don't do this a log is a function it's not really a mathematical term or or a factor so there's no such thing as distributing this log here in this manner so please 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 don't do this these properties of logs only work if the argument has multiplication, division, or exponentiation. What can we do with properties of logs aside from simplifying them to make things simple? Well, a common thing that we need to do with logs is to rewrite them because there are a lot of areas of mathematics, be it solving equations or maybe in calculus you want to integrate something or differentiate something. You tend to want to manipulate logarithmic expressions. These manipulations, we can do one of two things. It's called expanding or condensing. Let's talk about um, expanding first. As the name sounds or suggests, expanding is just taking one log and expanding it, making it bigger, making it in, uh, chopping up into its individual pieces. So let's take a look um, at an example. Suppose I asked you to expand this logarithmic expression. Log of xy cubed over z squared. Notice you start with one log. Your final answer should contain as many logs as possible. Here's my hint to you. Every unique factor should have its own log. If you have a fraction, 
factors in the numerator will have positive logs, factors in the denominator will have negative logs. So for this particular example, if I wanted to expand him, the first thing I want to do is identify the unique factors, all the players involved. Now this is just a visual thing, it's not a calculation thing. So I hope we can see that we have an X, Y, and a Z that are all different. So even if I have no idea what I'm doing, according to this idea, I know that the X is going to have its own log, that the Y cubed is going to have its own log, and the Z squared will have its own log. Even if you have no idea what, you do, uh, what, what to do, you can do that at least. Every unique piece when you're expanding will have its own separate logs. Now you just have to remember the properties. Multiplication is addition, division is subtraction. I can be quite honest, I don't actually think of it that way. I think of it as my earlier hint. Anything that's in the numerator will have a positive log. Anything in the denominator will have a negative log. So the X and the Y were in the numerator, so their logs better be pluses. The Z's in the denominator, their log better, that log has to be minus. The last thing you want to do is the power property. Inside of log, if there are any exponents, you just got to move them out in front. So your final, final expansion would be log of X plus 3 log Y minus 2 log z. Notice I dropped the parentheses. When your argument is just one piece, you don't need to put the parentheses if you don't want to. Of course, it's not wrong if you do put them in. It sort of like uh, um, emphasizes the fact that it's an argument. But for any mathematician, if you don't use any parentheses with logs, we just assume the very next thing is inside of it. So there we go. That is the expanded form. Let's take a look at a couple more examples um, in semi-full speed. So let's expand um, natural log of the square root of x over y. Oh, there's radicals now. It looks complicated. Now remember when we're dealing with logs, logs are nothing more than math for exponents. So anytime I have a radical, I want to convert them into an exponent because that's what I can do. So the first thing I would do if I want to expand this guy is to actually simplify him. Rewrite any radicals as an exponent. And I hope we all remember that a square root is the same thing as exponent of 1 half. Then applying properties of exponents, yes, we have to remember those. We can't forget them. Properties of exponents state that if you have an um, a exponent outside of parentheses, you can distribute the exponent on the inside. So this becomes x to the 1 half over y to the 1 half. Now we can go ahead and do the logarithmic properties. So again, every unique piece will have its own log. So I only have two players here, the x and the y. So the ln of x to the 1 half will be its own guy. The ln y to the 1 half will be its own guy. And then whatever's on top will be positive. Whatever's on the bottom will be negative, which means the y has to be negative. Last but not least, let's move those exponents out in front. So there is our expanded expression, 1 half ln x minus 1 half ln y. So let's take a look at one last one in super full speed. Well, I guess that's redundant. It can't be full speed if it's super. Um, let's expand log of the cube roots of x plus 2 over x to the 4, x squared plus 4. Yikes, yeah. So the first thing I want to do is take care of that cube root, x plus 2 over x to the 4, parentheses x squared plus 4 to the 1 third power. Then go ahead and distribute the exponents. Now we have to remember something from properties of exponents. Uh, just like with logs, these properties only works for multiplication, division, 
and, and powers. So here in the numerator, notice I, it's, I don't have any multiplication or division. It's a sum. It's a plusing here. So when I distribute this one third, I cannot distribute to both of them. I have to distribute uh, the one third to the whole x plus 2 as one group. So the way we write this would be x plus 2 to the one third power. Because I can't do it individually, it has to stay as a cluster. But in the denominator, I do have multiplication, so I can go ahead and distribute this one third here and one third there. So that gives you x to the four thirds, parentheses x squared plus four to the one third. So now we can go ahead and break them up. I hope we can identify we have three players, the x plus two, the x, and the x squared plus four. Those will be individual logs. So this equals log of x plus 2 to the 1 third power by itself, log of x to the 4 thirds by itself, log of x squared plus 4 to the 1 third by itself. And again, the, I, the rule of thumb is anything that came from the numerator will be positive, anything that came from the denominator will be negative. So this will be negative, and that will be negative. And the last thing you want to do is move the exponents in front. So it's 1 third log x plus 2 minus 4 thirds log x minus 1 third log x squared plus 4. That is the expanded form. Just a quick note here, notice how this x I didn't use parentheses but these guys I did use parentheses because again if your argument is just one solid piece you don't need to use parentheses but if your argument has pluses and minuses, multiple pieces, you do. So great, with these properties we can expand. But remember, in math, anything you can do, you should be able to undo. So an expectation is that you do the exact opposite. The exact opposite of expansion is what we call condensing. And it really is just doing the three steps in reverse. Let's summarize, what did we do for expansions? We what did we do? We split the logs into pieces uh, using the product and quotient rule. Then we moved exponents down. So it stands to reason that condensation is the exact opposite steps. Condensing, we're going to move exponents up and then put logs together as one. Right. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, say I want you, you to condense, let's start off easy and then we'll work our way up. Log of A plus two log of B. So we're going to do the exact reverse steps. First thing is take care of any exponents. So exponents will be coefficients, will be numbers in front of logs. In this case, we only have one. So the first thing I'll do is bring this guy up. The moment you have taken care of all your exponents, you can basically just go ahead and write one log. That's it, because your final answer to a condensing problem is always one log. Now you follow the same rules as we did in the expansion one, these rules up here. Whatever's in the numerator will be positive, whatever's in the denominator will be negative, but you're just going to do it in reverse. So the reverse logic is, whatever log is positive will be in the numerator, whatever log is negative will be in the denominator. In this case here, both of these guys are plus logs, they're positive logs, so their arguments a and b squared, they're going to be multiplied together in the numerator. So there we go, that's it log of a b squared is the condensed version. Let's take a look at a more interesting one, more involved one. Uh, so condense, I forgot to write the instructions before but hopefully you guys knew it was condense. Condense the natural log of x squared minus uh, 25 minus ln of x plus 5. So step one, take care of any exponents, which would be coefficients. There are none. There aren't any non-1 uh, coefficients here. So you just go ahead and step two, 
merge it together as one log. Again, any log that's positive, this guy here, will be in the numerator. Any log that was negative, see how this guy's a subtracting log, he will be in the denominator. Okay. For all intents and purposes, that's it. We've condensed it. There's nothing more we can do. But I hope this gives us a slight, you know, suspicion, difference of two perfect squares. We actually can factor that guy, right? That's x minus 5, x plus 5. And lo and behold, hey, these guys cancel out. So in addition to expanding and condensing, if you guys can go ahead and simplify, do it. Let's look at one last example here. Suppose I ask you to condense, try to make this look ugly, log base 2 of 3 minus 3 log base 2 of x plus 1 half log base 2 of x plus 1. Looks crazy, but it's going to be the same procedure. First things first, move up the exponents if you have any. So this guy here gets moved up on the x. This guy here gets moved up on the entire parentheses. So this equals log base 2 of 3 minus log base 2 of x cubed plus log base 2 of x plus 1 to the 1 half power. The moment you take care of the exponents, I don't care how ugly and messy the problem looks, if it's a condensing problem, your very next step should just always be writing a single log. Now remember, any log that was positive, the argument goes on top. Any log that was negative, the argument goes in the denominator. So this was a positive log, because it's positive here. And this guy's log was positive, because it's positive here. So those two guys will be multiplied together on top, leaving this guy here, the x cubed, on the bottom. See, that was actually so tough. There's nothing to simplify. That's our final answer. We should know that an exponent of 1 half is also a square root. So I've seen textbooks or other math teachers convert that into a radical. I'm not going to be picky. Um, this is a good looking answer right here. But I will accept both. So whichever one you want to use uh, is perfectly fine. So using properties of logs to expand and condense. That is topic 46.